Howdy everyone, my name is Bonner, I'm a music composer and producer, and today we're going to be looking at the Akai Professional MPK Mini. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so let's get straight into how to set this thing up. This is going to be for those of you that just want to get a, a quick uh, little tutorial on how to set it up, in, uh, especially in Ableton, uh, and that way you can get going and you can figure the rest out on your own. Uh, for those of you that want to stick around a little longer, I will go into some of the controls a little bit more detailed. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's get started. Step one is very, 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 very complicated. All you need to do is simply grab this guy here. You need to grab the USB cable and you need to plug it the hell in. And uh, like I said, it's a very complicated process. I hope you can manage. Now, what's going to happen is as soon as you plug it in and it's recognized in your software, this little light's going to come up. You should be able to change that between green and red. If you can, fantastic. You have completed step one. You are a genius. If it hasn't worked, do not fret. The first thing I would try is try a different USB port on your computer and see if it's recognized. If that does not work, I strongly suggest that you contact Akai support team. However, if you are using a power a USB hub, you need to make sure it is a powered USB hub or it will not work, okay? Um, but like I said, if you're still having trouble, contact Akai support. I'm sure they'd be happy to help you out with your new product, okay? Next step we want to do is I'm going to load up Ableton here because that's my software of choice, making sure that it's all plugged in and ready to go. So we load up Ableton here, we jump straight in, we go to options, we go to preferences. Now for those of you who just want a plug and play, I will figure it out on my self attitude. Good on you. Follow the settings here and I will not let you down and the best of luck to you. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like if it gave you a hand. Um, for those of you that want a little bit more detail, it starts now. Let's go. So. Input we've set to track, the reason for that, and this will help you setting up any other MIDI instruments that you may have in the future. The reason why we've got input set to track means that if I'm to push a key on here or say, for example, one of these guys or turn a knobby thing, um, it is telling Ableton that you want to capture that information. If you do not have that turned on, it's not going to record jiddly squat, okay? So make sure that guy is on. In terms of this guy here, the other two functions we don't need. Um, in terms of output, the reason why I have sync turned on is, um, and look, I could be wrong here, um, but I'm I, I, I'm pretty confident this is uh, the function that it's going to use. I want to sync the clock of Ableton with this MIDI controller. Um, so I want when I use, if I was to use the appreciator on here, um, I want to the tempo that's in Ableton to be synced to this guy here, so that you know. A 30 second note, for example, if I set it to appreciate on a 30 second note, um, it is in the right tempo, otherwise it's not gonna work, okay? So that's why I've got that setting turned on. I would recommend that you do the same. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So if I was to do something right now in Ableton, it's gonna capture it. You can see it there and it's good to go. So let's just get into it and we'll show you how different functions show up. So let's zoom right out of here on the keyboard. If I push a pad, it selects a key. If I push a key, it selects a key. If I turn one of the knobs here, you can see that it's saying there's a signal being sent. We can see that through this guy down here, but you cannot see it. Why not? Because it's not a key. And so we can see here, you know, keys. Yay, I love keys. And so now we're doing the twisty thing and nothing's happening. But wait, it is happening. The way that you view what this is doing is going into envelopes and you can see it's right there. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Um, and so that's how that works by default. Now. Here's where you can get into some customization. One thing that I will note is, um, from my experience, when I tried to edit these, uh, I couldn't do it while Ableton was open or hooked into the uh, MIDI controller. So make sure you close Ableton before going to these next steps. Um, and then we need to download the software. So the software you were looking for, you would have had a little leaflet in your thing that will tell you where to download this software. There is a bunch in there, but the one that I only use and the one that you realistically only need is the MPK Mini Mark II Editor. Once you've downloaded it and installed it, plug your MIDI in, so plug your controller in, load this guy up, and you will be able to change things to your heart's desire. Let's go into some of the basic controls. What you can, I'll give a couple of quick things what you can do with it, and then it's up to you to set it how you prefer. So starting in the top left, customization for the joystick, starting with the pitch bend, which basically says that if you move that joystick, um, what do you want it to do? In this case, it's gonna bend the, pitch, bend the pitch of the note that you're holding. So if you're holding a C on a piano, it'll pitch bend that note. Y axis, um, at this point it's set to CC1. I honestly don't know the difference between CC1 and CC2. Um, it looks like it changes how the parameter works. Um, for me, I've just set it to CC1. The reason why this is set to 
you why this would be useful is because you can do things like for example say you want to modulate um the pitch band not just with the pitch say you don't just want pitch to change say you want a filter to be applied so if you push into the top right with the joystick it's going to use a bit of both of those and that kind of stuff so you can do some nit filly stuff with that and it's great bottom left you will see program on the uh on this little guy itself you can store up to four programs in its internal memory um, the last one there is RAM and what that is for is testing out new things so you know say you wanted to experiment a little bit and you try something out and you're not sure if it's gonna work this is so you don't override one of your um, already configured programs and so you would send it to RAM test it out if it works fantastic you can save it to a program the thing that also ties into this um, is also the save function where you can save any presets you've made to your computer so that realistically you shouldn't ever lose a program you can always fetch it and then just save it and say hey this is program default program one etc 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 and name it whatever the hell you desire so I'm gonna fetch the first program just to see how that works so i'm going to select the input and the output which is that and that and apply okay let's go so it has loaded up the device settings and we hit get and straight away everything is there alrighty so i have loaded up my program here um and the major things that I've done here, uh, there are three of them. One is that the banks by default now go from C to G3. Um, what that basically means is that bank A, which we switch banks by pressing this button here, bank A will go from here to here, sorry, to here, not to A, um, and then the other bank will then go from here through to here. That is my preference on how I like to set it up. Um, you can set it up any way you like. Uh, the other alternative is you can also use bank A, say, to trigger samples for C3 through to G, and then you want bank B to do like a pitch bend thing. So it uses the one sample, but then every time you go up a pad, it raises it up by a step or an octave. So for example, let's say we've got like a tom sound. And so when we push, um, the bottom left pad it'll be the default sample sound um, but as we go up it's going to raise the pitch so it's going to go boom, 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 like that as we go up which can be useful for you know uh, creating little rolls and stuff like that in hip-hop dance music that kind of stuff alrighty let's move over to the next obvious thing that I changed which is the keyboard and all I did is I changed the octave position the reason for this is when I grew up playing piano and by no means am I good at it but I do know how to play it um, my left hand was always in the octave below middle C my right hand was always in the octave of middle C and so by default Akai doesn't actually do this by default this is at zero and so what happens is um, you'll notice that this will change to C3 on here now what this basically means is that by default this is middle C here and so your left hand would be in the octave of middle C and your right hand would be in the octave above middle C which just is my preference so all I did to change that in the software is I moved it down one octave which puts it exactly where I want the last thing that I did and now look this is gonna be um, this is gonna be useful for two things one the appreciator and two for the repeating notes um, I changed the clock from internal to external what that means is that um, it's getting its timing information from Ableton instead of itself what this means is that I don't have to change the tempo on this it's gonna get that tempo information from Ableton uh, I strongly recommend that you do this uh, it will save any kind of you know errors on our behalf of setting the wrong tempo that kind of stuff it also makes it a heck of a lot easier because um, the, you don't really have any kinds of heads up display on this guy like at all you would be relying completely on the flashing of this symbol and doing it this way means that it'd be more accurate and so I strongly recommend that you turn that on as well like I said this will only affect two things though it will affect the pregiator as well as the uh, note repeat button the last part is obviously the knobs at the top here I've left them as the default because um, they're set over some pretty good ones now the way that I can basically give you a tip on how to use these is a great configuration option is some parameters especially if it's like if you use this a lot for a particular type of software instrument or anything like that or a particular parameter sometimes having the full right full full 
full range of 0 to 127 is simply too much for a tiny little space like this, right? And so these parameters, this low and high enables you to say, well, you know, the lowest, if you turn it all the way to the left, instead of it being zero, let's say it's 50 and the highest is gonna be 100. It gives you way more movement in here so you can be a lot more precise if that's what you need. And so um, depending on which parameter you set, you can get into some detail there. That is pretty much it. It's very simple, very straightforward, but there is quite a lot of flexibility here. Some of it I haven't fully explored myself yet, but. I do hope that uh, giving this gets you set up, ready to go, and gives you some enlightenment what you can do. There are some more settings that um, look that you are able to do on the Kai itself. Um, these are pretty self-explanatory. They are mentioned in the manual itself. Put simply, they they're very niche. It's targeted mainly towards the appreciator and the repeat buttons. And it just determines the parameters for that appreciator. Um, the reason you, you can see them just above here, so you can see these little um, writings above the top which talk about, you know, swing, that kind of stuff, and that's all that's for. I'm not going to touch on that because it is um, something that's very particular, and uh, you will be able to look that up in the manual if that's what you need. Other than that, though, I hope you enjoyed the video, um, and you can go on and get started, and I hope to see you making some great music. Take care.